In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Jude verses 3 and 4, where I'll ask the question, why must we contend for the faith? Jude verses 3 and 4 says, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Jude writes a book to his fellow believers, and he was hoping to write about their common salvation. He was hoping to write a book that would encourage all the readers to look at this beautiful gift of salvation given to them in Christ Jesus. But instead, he finds that he has to write a different book, one other than the one that he was expecting. And what he is writing is an encouragement and a warning of the necessity for believers to contend for the faith given to the saints. So here are three thoughts from Jude, verses 3 and 4, answering the question, why must we contend for the faith? Thought number one, creeping in. Jude says that there are those who are creeping into the church, and these who are creeping into the church are creeping in to sow division, to cause disruption, and to do damage to the church of Christ. And This is something that he recognizes was designated from long ago, from eternity past. There was ordained by God people to enter into the church to cause disruption, to cause problems. They are going to creep in. And what do we do as a result? What must we do? We must contend for the faith because we recognize that there are, in fact, enemies of the church creeping into it. And that this is a part of the Lord's plan. It's a part of the Lord's plan to demonstrate the great beauty inherent in the salvation given to us in Christ Jesus, and to demonstrate to all of us that this is something that must be defended, that it must be cared for and protected and dwelt upon, because if we don't, then we might find ourselves stumbling into those false teachings that these false teachers who are creeping into the church are trying to spread. Thought number two, pervert grace. Why are these people creeping in? They're creeping in because they want to pervert grace. They want to say something other than what has been taught to these believers from the apostles. They want to go in and say, look at this great grace that we have been given in Christ Jesus. It means that you can do whatever you want. It means that you can engage in sensuality and that there's no problem with it because if we sin more, will not grace abound. And there are lots of people who think in this way. There are lots of people who have this idea that because we have received such a great grace from our Heavenly Father that we can do whatever we want. We can completely ignore all of the commands of Scripture because we trust that the grace of God is sufficient to save us. Well, it's true. The grace of God is sufficient to save you, but you must not presume upon that grace. You must not say, the grace of God has covered me, therefore I can do whatever it is that I want to do. I can make a mockery of the great sacrifice of Christ. That just isn't the case. We must recognize that the Lord has been gracious to us, but we must not presume upon it. We must not pervert that great grace that's been given to us. We must recognize that there are expectations for how we are to live with one another and the ways that our actions demonstrate our belief in the faithfulness of God. Thought number three, deny the Lord. Ultimately, these people who are creeping in, these people who are perverting the grace of Christ Jesus, they are denying the Lord. They don't really believe in the gospel. They don't really believe that Jesus is the Christ. They don't really believe the apostles' teaching. And because they don't believe those things, they are really denying the Lord entirely. They are presenting a gospel that is false. They are presenting lies about the nature of the world and the way that we relate to God. So we have to contend for the faith, knowing that there are people creeping into the church with the expressed purpose of causing disruption, of leading people into sensuality. And these people have denied the Lord. They have denied Christ. And the way that you know this is the case is because they are relying on something other than Christ. 
for their salvation. They're saying that the apostles' teaching is insufficient, that it's incomplete, that it is unclear, and that they have the clarifications that are necessary. When somebody comes in and starts presenting these things to you, when somebody comes into the church and starts saying, you know what the Bible says about sensuality, but this is what the truth is, when they say that, you need to know that these are those who are crept into the church, who are trying to sow division, and who are trying to pervert the beautiful grace inherent in the gospel. Don't listen to them, but instead contend for the faith Know the gospel through and through and defend it against those who would deny the Lord. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of the book of Jude. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of scripture together.